Good evening and welcome from a very wet Cumbria. Well, we did have periods of sunshine today, which was nice, but now it's very windy with a lot of hailstones and heavy rain. So we pray that all would be comfortable and safe and dry this evening in their homes. <clears throat> but I welcome all of you, my dear brothers and sisters, and especially to our beautiful family in America, on this your Thanksgiving Day. How lovely to be able to gather with loved ones. We give thanks to God and we celebrate a spiritual Thanksgiving Day for all the abundance that we receive from God's loving hand. And I see that our dear sister Linda has joined us from East Connecticut and I pray you too are having a wonderful day with your family. And for those who've not logged in on live stream and on our Facebook page, we have our dear sister Mary and we wish you and your dear husband Mike and family and Mike's mom, Angela, a blessed Thanksgiving with sister Sandra and hello brother Kaj. And it's wonderful to have you here with us with our dear brother Lawrence. <clears throat> Forgive me, I've got a frog in my throat. So this evening I want to dedicate my prayers, especially for dear sister Elsie, one of our dear lifelong friends of the community in Hebden Bridge in Yorkshire. We pray especially for her daughter Helen and her daughter Akira, who's having a rough time and for Elsie's other daughter, Jane, and her son, Joel, who's at University in York, who also is having a few personal struggles and issues. But we bring also each one of you, our prayer partners for peace. So we light our light and we give thanks to a father, mother, God, who has many names and none, but who has called you by name to come and to celebrate your divinity as an ambassador of peace in this beautiful cathedral of God on this Thanksgiving day. Amen. And now we ring our bells for unity and peace. <coughs> I love you when you bow in your mosque, kneel in your temple, pray in your church. For you and I are sons and daughters of one religion, and it is the one spirit, Karl Gibran. So now we open our hearts and we call on the Spirit of God to guide us and to show us in word and in meditation so that each one of us will leave this room of prayer and praise more heartened, strengthened and reawakened to who we really are as co-creators of God. And now for our evening prayer. <clears throat> and it's from Favourite Prayers and it's from a gentleman called Peter George and he's taking the prayer from by David Gatchia, who died in 18, sorry, 1983. And I'll just turn the music down if I may. That's it. I don't want to be the Christ, dear Lord. I'd rather be myself and feel free. You keep on calling me and overroad. I beg you saying, dear Lord, don't choose me. I can't do miracles or prophesy. I'm weak and weary, 
sick and soaked in sin. Yet day and night I hear the same reply, I love you and I want you to begin. O oh Lord, I feel you love me even though you tell me things I do not want to know. Isn't that lovely? O oh Lord, I feel you love me even though you tell me things I do not want to know. I guess that's true of all of us at some stage. So now for our hymn from the Unitarian Hymn Book in Candle, where many of them are still mopping up after the torrential floods and our hearts go out to them. Deep in the shadows of the past is the hymn, and it's hymn number 29. While others bow to changeless gods, they met a mystery. God with an uncompleted name, I am what I will be. And by their tents, around their fires, in story, song and lore, they praised, remembered, handed on a past that promised more. From Exodus to Pentecost, the promise changed and grew, while some remembering the past recorded what they knew, and some in letters or laments, in prophecy and praise, recovered, held and expressed new hope for changing days. For all the writings that survived for leaders long ago, who sifted, copied, and preserved the Bible that we know. Give thanks and find its story yet, our promise, strength, and call, the model of emerging faith, alive with hope for all. And that's by Brian Wren, born in 1936. Isn't that a beautiful hymn? And on the other side, there's actually the music to it, and it looks really good. Maybe one day when I master the harp, I might be able to play it, hopefully. So now, <clears throat> our next reading is an audio reading from our dear sister Marilla. And she talks about God as a loving father. So let's listen to Marilla. Jesus continually shows us that God is a loving Father. He called him Abba, which is the equivalent of Daddy. When the Apostles finally said, Show us the Father, Jesus said, He that has seen me has seen the Father. To see the Father, we only have to read the Gospel stories. When the blind beggar Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me, the disciples told him to go away and be quiet. But Jesus called to him and said tenderly, Bartimaeus, receive your sight. We see him moved with compassion for the crowds of people following him who were like sheep without a shepherd. The apostles said, send them away. But Jesus said, they are hungry. I will not send them away lest they faint on the way. And he fed them. When the woman caught in adultery was dragged into the presence of Jesus by her accusers, they wanted to stone her, but Jesus looked at her with love and mercy and said, Go in peace and sin no more. We see him weeping. He wept over the death of his friend Lazarus and for the city of Jerusalem because they refused to listen to him. He said, How often would I have gathered my children together as a hen gathers her chickens. God our Father has the same concern for each one of us. One of the great spiritual directors, the Abbe de Turvel, gave us a wonderful insight into the nature of God. He writes, when we get to know our Lord even a little, the angry, exacting and narrow God disappears. In spite of all our defects, we can love with confidence and joy. Remain at peace and do not overburden yourself with worries about how you pray. Such efforts are useless. The peace of Christ must exist even in the midst of all our imperfections. Rejoice at the reassurance and comfort that I am giving you, 
because this is coming from the Lord himself. Do not think of God as hard to please, but rather as generous beyond all that you can ask or think. Get rid of the thought once and for all that God is displeased or intolerant towards our weakness. The truth is exactly the opposite. We must pray with the utmost simplicity, speaking to God in our own words, knowing without a doubt that he hears you, that he loves you, the whole of you just as you are. We must realize that God loves us incomparably more than we will ever know how to love him. So the main purpose of prayer is to get to know God and have a relationship of father and daughter or father and son. We can see how much Jesus relied on prayer. After an exhausting day of preaching to the crowds and healing the sick, he would withdraw to an isolated place to pray. Jesus spent many hours in prayer. He rose before dawn and often prayed for whole nights. We look at some of his specific prayers. He prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane as death approached, saying, Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Hebrews tells us that he offered prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. But he was not saved from death. Jesus knew the sensation of not getting an answer to his prayers, but he put the will of his Father before that of his own. On the whole, he prayed for others. Take this cup from me might be the only prayer he offered for himself. Of the seven cries from the cross, at least three were prayers. In his final intercessory prayer, he asked on behalf of his persecutors, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So if we have any doubts about why we should pray, we only have to look to Jesus and see that first and foremost, he took everything to his Father in prayer, showing us that prayer is a continuous friendship with God. And on this beautiful Thanksgiving Day for our brothers and sisters across the pond, let us just for a moment 
just relax in our prayer corner and let us be led by the Holy Spirit of God to visualize a Thanksgiving meal but not just for blood brothers and sisters but for God's children on the periphery, the marginalized, especially the homeless and our ex-servicemen and women struggling to live again in Civvy Street. I would like you to imagine <clears throat> that Francis and Claire with Mother Mary and Mother Earth come knocking on your door and ask you to come and help them to prepare a special banquet, a banquet of thanksgiving to God for all that we receive from the hands of a loving Father, Mother God. But that this banquet would be for those who've never been to a banquet and who've often passed houses, seeing families all gathered together around a table for a celebration meal on Thanksgiving Day. And maybe they felt sad and despondent because they too had a family and now are feeling alone and vulnerable. But the angel of the Lord blows a trumpet across the four corners of the earth. And as you walk with Francis and Claire, with Mother Mary and Mother Earth, you hear the angel trumpet calling the children of God into the cathedral of God for an amazing banquet, a banquet filled with every produce that nature could offer us from Mother Earth's table. And as you come into this amazing place, you see a room that has no ceiling, for the ceiling is the sky of heaven. And all around you, you can see the brothers and sisters and friends of the Teo community busy setting places at these long trestle tables. And great effort has gone into this celebration. And in the kitchen, many of us are there with our aprons on, cooking a feast for kings. There's every type of dish that you could imagine, both meat and vegetarian. And even the puddings have got a continental flavor representing every country of the world. There are gattos that you've never seen anything like, mouth-watering. And it's all for the children of God who have never sensed a belonging in a family. And the angel of God is joined by another three magnificent archangels and each one faces north, south, east and west. And now they let off this almighty ensemble of singing glory to God in the highest on this Thanksgiving day. For our Father, Mother God has prepared a table for God's beloved children who may have felt abandoned, unloved, 
incarcerated, struggling on every level in their mind, in their body, and even in their spirit. And the doors of this enormous banqueting room have been opened and you are there to welcome them and to take them to their special place and to show them that it was their guardian angel who wrote their name on their little name card. And they look at you with tears in their eyes that someone could remember them on Thanksgiving Day. And as they sit at their place, they're soon joined by their friends from the ghettos, from under the archways. And there's great merriment and great joy. And soon the banqueting hall is full and there's one place empty and it has a reserved sign and it's for you and as you sit at this table with the children of God you feel at home because these are special children of God they own nothing they have very little and yet their heart is ablaze with so much love for you, for acknowledging them as a human being and making every effort to treat them as a human being with dignity, with love and respect. And suddenly the bell rings and all the beautiful foods from the kitchen keep coming. There is a fish course to start with or a vegetarian followed by soup and then turkey and all the trimmings that go with the Thanksgiving meal and lashings of peking pie and all that goes with that. And at the very end, they each get up to say thank you. And one elderly man comes up to you and asks, can he sit next to you? For he has something to share with you. And you notice without trying to draw his attention to it, but he could really do with a good wash and a good soap. So you say to him after the meal, would you be offended if I brought you home and allowed you have a nice hot bath and some clean clothing? He said, I would be honored. So after the meal, and as everybody's busy sharing and laughing and singing, the two of you sneak away. You take him home and quietly go upstairs in your little monastery. And as you help him undress, you put bubble baths, you light some candles around the bath. You want it to be special for him and memorable. And as you leave him for a moment to completely undress and get into the bath, you come in when he said, it's okay. But there's something about him that's rather unusual in that he's left his mittens on, his hands, with his fingers showing and you asked if you could remove them, and he said no, not yet. 
but if you would mind scrubbing my back, I would be ever so thankful. So in scrubbing his back and washing his hair and between his toes, he lies there for hours, singing his little heart out. And then he calls you to come and the clothing you left for them, they look a different person. So you bring him downstairs to meet the community and everyone's wondering, who is this new person? Is it a new member? So he asks them all to sit by the fire because they've all eaten too. And he looks at them and they sense something different. And he takes the mittens off. And it is the Christ. You can see the nails, the prints of the nails in his hands. And he says, Whatever you do for the least of these, my brothers and sisters, my children, you do for me. I came to you disguised as a tramp. And yet you afforded me dignity. Blessed are you. Great will be your reward. Great will be your reward. For you embrace the Christ, the friend of the homeless, the downtrodden, and you offer them love, even your spare clothing. And as you gather together, you can feel the love of your God reawakening in your heart that you too are loved and that it's important on this journey of faith that we never walk past a homeless person and rather than give them money better to take them in to a cafe and treat them to a bowl of soup or a cup of tea. But here this man was Christ, and he saved the best to last, hence not taking off his gloves. How blessed are we when we can see Christ and embrace the love of God. In the children of God, who through no fault of their own, may have lost everything, even family, partners and children. Maybe they can't cope with the flashbacks of Afghanistan, as many of our troops here endure. They turn to drugs and drink to blot out the awful flashbacks and memories. How blessed are we that we can take that leap of faith like Francis and embrace the modern day lepers who are crying out for acceptance, for dignity and for love. So we celebrate our Thanksgiving day with a spiritual twist. We welcome the Christ, the Son of God, the Incarnate One, the Beloved. And always be mindful when you are out walking or going through the cities or on a train or on a bus, you never know it could be Christ sat next to you. Let us be still. 
Let us be still. And as we relax in the presence of all that is, we say thank you, God, for the things we take for granted. Forgive us for doing this, knowing that at our table of plenty, your children in different parts of the world are hungry and are dying of thirst. Help us to give generously of our time not just of our prayer, but of our time and of our love. And we bring to you, Lord God, all of us here. And we ask you now, Lord, to lay your healing hand on each one of us and to fill us, to fill us with gratitude for the things we so often take for granted. A roof over our head, hot running water, electricity at the switch of a button, clean clothes, nice friends and family, knowing there are many who don't even have what we have. And we give thanks for our spiritual community our brothers and sisters who are following you, the barefoot Galilean, who has touched so many lives, to give without counting the cost, but to give in love, as Francis did. And we ask Christ to bless you at your table today. And we pray that you will have some leftovers to bring to the homeless, as we do here. Let us now pray a special prayer, the prayer of Jesus. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give to all of us here, our brothers and sisters in service to love, our daily bread. Forgive us, oh forgive us our selfishness, our stubbornness of heart, maybe our spiritual arrogance or religiosity. Lead us not astray, O Lord, but protect us from those vitriolic negative evil influences that are determined to lead us away from your love. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. So be it. O oh, blessed Lord. Amen. And our closing prayer. O oh, Father, Mother God, you have called each one of us to say yes to love. We say yes, and we join the Archangel Princes of the North, South, East and West, and from our hearts, we sing the great Alleluia. And we thank you for all our abundance from your hand. For the air we breathe, the food we eat, for family and friends of like mind, and for our beautiful community who remain loyal to you, despite the tests, the challenges, and the dark night of the soul, you are always there. We bless you. We praise you for our Teo family and friends on our spiritual Thanksgiving Day. Amen.
And I ask Jesus to reveal himself to you and to bless you and all your loved ones as you celebrate the gift of thanksgiving. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve our God, the God who has many names and none. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, kaxet gona mom shanti, solo de caritas, salam alaika, and may the peace of the Son of Peace, of the King of Peace, become your peace as ambassadors of peace. I wish you all a blessed day or evening wherever you are in the world and from my heart I thank you for being here and for breaking bread with each one of us from across the pond. God bless you. Love you all.